I'm going to go ahead and call the workshop to order. Um, and I believe we're going to do things a little different. Uh, so we'll uh, start out. Are you ready to do the discussion of the school concurrency? I think you're doing that one, David. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a very brief discussion. Um, just wanted to put this on here to let more of a status update, let council know that we have a meeting scheduled tomorrow or late Thursday with a consultant that has uh, adopted, drafted some of these ordinances in the past and help us draft an ordinance or at least work through the issue, see if it's applicable to what we're trying to do. And uh, if it is something that we feel like uh, council should pursue, then have them <clears throat> give us a price to and a proposal to draft an ordinance and submit to council. And this is the York School District impact fee we're talking about? Or? No, this is uh, York, um, I'm sorry, school concern, concurrency planning. One of the things that was asked by the planning commission during recode and specifically what that does is allows school districts to be consulted when there are new developments similar to the way that we consult utility providers as to their water and sewer availability they would uh, let us know of their school district capacity okay. and whether or not they have the ability to serve students and the capability or and the desire or uh, so it's kind of um, similar to that okay but it's called school concurrency planning okay. and, uh, and certainly then, would have impact on um, other school funding options yeah. and so I think it's something we need to look at in, in its entirety and make a recommendation as to whether or not uh, we feel like we should follow the what was a planning commission recommendation to at least explore okay and I knew that was something else you were looking at from talking to Allison and stuff. I just wasn't sure wh which one we were discussing tonight, which one it was. So. Yeah, yeah, quick question on that. So is it the fact that if there's a development going into a specific area, there would be, you would actually have a meeting with the school districts that are impacted by it to let them know in forehand or to get, make them part of the feedback as when it comes to the planning of it? The, the latter, which latter. is uh, if, uh, probably during the preliminary plat process, we send out um, a questionnaire now in a lot of cases to the school to ask them how it would impact what we would do with this. Uh, just like a utility, we require a willingness and capability letter. Okay. We would have a provision for the school district to weigh in as to whether they had capacity. Gotcha. And okay. okay, very good, thank you. Anybody else, any questions for them or comments before we move on to the next thing? Okay, then I guess uh, I think uh, I was told that uh, Michael's going to go next, I guess, so um, discussion on York County park fees. Yeah. And I do have a presentation, so we'll go through that. Go back. I see we're getting some parking spaces at the Veterans Park. Okay, uh, good evening, uh, Council. Um, we had talked about park fees at the um, retreat, and um, I know there was some feedback and some discussion since then. So we, being management and parks, I've got Pat here uh, who runs Ebenezer Park, has been in, in this business for a long time, to really look at, you know, is this right, is this fair, are, are these, uh, is this what we want to do? So I think we've made some adjustments, which I'll highlight in the presentation, and we can have a discussion on that. Um, I did kind of want to start by saying, you know, what's the purpose here? What, what, are, what are real objectives in this? And, you know, one of the foremost things is Allison Creek is going to open this year, so we need to have fees in place when that opens. We expect that to be in March of 2023. We're hoping a little earlier. But all, at the same time, if, if we're going to go ahead and do fee ordinance now, we just figure we go ahead and kind of wrap everything up in that. So that's one driver's Allison Creek opening. The next thing is we're talking about is charging uh, day use fees year round instead of Memorial Day to Labor Day. We think this brings us more in line with some of the state parks and some of the other way operations are doing. Um, 
and uh, I'll talk to revenues and, and expenditures later, but we think that can, can help us in some ways in terms of how the, the park operates and, and how we operate out of the general fund for Ebenezer Park and, uh, and Allison Creek Park. Uh, we're, and, and subsequently, we would say we'd go to an annual pass instead of a season pass. If we do, we do approve going to um, a year-round structure. So instead of season pass, which you buy before Memorial Day, you could buy the season pass at any point, and it would be good for one calendar year. So you'd have that season pass or that annual pass, and it will allow you access to both Allison Creek Park and Ebenezer Park as an added benefit. Um, we also want to switch to our day use fees to individuals instead of vehicles. That's a significant change, but I've talked that through with Pat. He thinks we can work that, and we think it's a more fair structure. Um, if you go in as a one person right now, you pay a flat per vehicle charge. We haven't raised fees since 2011, and um, as you'll see, you know we're a little bit behind some of where the state parks are, but we can talk about that. So we think it's a more um, a more fair and structured system to charge per person instead of per vehicle. In addition, if you have pedestrians come in, which there is a pedestrian trail that will be at Allison Creek, so you could have folks walk in and they would they would pay their fee as well. So that's really what we're looking at on the day use fees. Um, we're looking at Moss fee increases to the Ebenezer Park um, RV um, in categories. We'll also have an Allison Creek um, RV fee and our tent camping rates. Uh, right now, we have tent, we allow tent camping at Ebenezer Park in an RV site. They are not concrete pads, so you can pitch a tent on those sites. At Allison Creek, it will have a concrete pad, so you can't pitch a tent there, but it will have primitive campsites. So there's a separate charge for that. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Allison Creek um, park fees. So our financials, this is where we've operated over the past five years. Um, I did a, a deep dive and I wanted to look at where we are in terms of revenues and expenses and you can see um, generally we've been operating in the black, the blue being the revenues and the orange being the expenditures. Uh, during COVID we were down um, a bit uh, and, and the park was down a lot of places for uh, renovations so we, we had a significant drop off there. Last year uh, 2021 was a much bigger year than we expected. As you all know, we had the traffic discussions, and um, but all in all, um, a lot of usage at the park, and um, that's a good thing. In 2022, we're ahead. Um, one thing just to note in here is that um, this is, these are the operating uh, costs. This does not capture a capital. So in my discussions with Kevin right now, when we look at capital renovations and things, we're not... Um, th this is budget only for operating, but we do want to have a little bit of reserve set aside to do some to offset some of the capital repairs is kind of what we're thinking here. Not a lot, but a little bit is um, in terms of what we're thinking. What does that mean? Well, you can see we're right about, I would say, 10 to 15 percent above the, um, the re revenues above the expenditures last um, year and a half. This does include the uh, store revenues as well. And I also wanted to point out our revenue breakdown. Um, this gives you a sense of where the revenues come from uh, at the park. Primarily, as you would expect, is the RV camping. That's the large slice of that pie you see in blue there. But next is the day use fees, and, and that's not an insignificant component of revenues um, at the park. Um, and you can see where we've been over the past five years. Again, RV camping leads with the day use fees, and then we've got our other uh, fees, which we'll discuss later. At the bottom, um, I've got our day use guest count, and you can see we were um, 30, 35,000, up to 37,000 in FY18. FY20, totally we dropped COVID and the renovations, and then I have no count there last year, and that's because the overwhelming numbers at the park, it was difficult for staff to keep up even with the counts. Well, so that's, so a going, big, that's more than doubling the day use. Right. He thinks it's probably in the 60,000 ballpark. And again, if you go to, um, you know, individuals vice vehicles, you're, you're capturing some of that revenue, and it's a more fair structure again, like we said. So with this, I also wanted to highlight some um, comparison with some of the state parks. Um, they charge you around, as you can see, Lake Watery, Lansford Canal, and Devil's Fork. So we're not, if we go to an annual fee structure, we're not out of, um, 
out of alignment with the rest of the state parks. You can see where the adult um, charges are, and these are um, per individuals. And um, right now we're at $5 per vehicle. I'll show you what we're, we're talking about on the next few slides. Seniors get a bit of a discount and children get a discount too, which we were also gonna propose in our fee structure. And then the annual passes, they have several um, menu items, if you will, to choose from, all of which have a window hanger, which are annual passes will. So in, our, in the case of our annual pass, you'll pay your money, he'll issue a window, uh, a windshield um, hanger, and then with that, you can take your whole family in so that for those annual passes, it's not a per person. You don't have to have four annual passes per family. You have one pass. That allows you in with that hanger, and it can be moved from vehicle to vehicle. That's a change from a sticker, which I think we used in the past. So we, we think that will allow you to move it from one vehicle to another. Could some folks perhaps, you know, lend it out to a friend? I mean, yeah, that's possible, but we think that'll, you know, that would be offset by the convenience and, and, and all those sorts of things. So. The all park passport gives you uh, a lot more parks. There's 47 parks, and then there's a all select passport, which gives you 35 of the 47. Um, and that's primarily what they sell, is a slightly lower uh, passport amount. And then there's a senior passport rate. So that's our comparison. Now, um, I think we sent out the fees ahead of time, so I'm gonna get into that discussion now so we can uh, talk through what we're proposing. Again, we had proposed some numbers previously at, um, at the retreat. We have since you know, reconsidered some of the concerns and we specifically look at, um, at York County residents. You know, can we you know, give them a, a bit of a break and um, this, you know, on both the day use fees and the um, annual passes. So we are proposing uh, slightly lower fees there. So, so for your county resident, if you're a family of four and you have two children, you're gonna pay $8 for, eight, for day use. You see where that compares to the states. It's in the ballpark. And um, you know, if your children are under six, then you know, you, you would, you'd actually pay $6. And right now you pay $5 to get your entire family in uh, by the vehicle. One quick question, is there a sure. plan for cost passes? You know, for the There's a purchase. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, and that's kind of what you're saying. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the state department can give you like one, like the proof that you had purchased. Mm -hmm. And we can look into that. Um, one or two. We thought about it. Me driving it. Jeeps and stuff is not mm -hmm. uncommon. Exactly. Or something. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, though, the goal is that once you leave the park, you're visiting your dashboard, yeah. you only take it out when you come to the park. Okay. So they will have numbers on it. On those, on those um, window hangs, <clears throat> is there a scan bar on those things that they'll just swipe it, or when they go in, or is, is no, they'll just present it. Just we'll present it as you know, season pass holders, and they'll okay. go through the gate. Well, those yeah. have numbers on them, though. Yeah, they'll have no, they'll be yeah, number passes. So it'll be a serial number. It'll be a serial number. That's what I was thinking. That, right. Okay. Yeah, each pass will be number so for inventory purposes. Right. Do that. Right, because as people pass, it's going to be hard, kind of hard. And is there any thought around having it also have like a little keychain one that you can? So there'll be a detachable part at the bottom yeah. that you can pop off and use. Now, if you're in a, that is particularly for people who may want to walk through the park, yeah, like from the neighborhood, or if you're on a motorcycle, so they can present it. You know, your yeah. don't have plates, but if you're in your vehicle, it needs to be displayed mm -hmm. on the on the mirror. Okay. Because otherwise, you know, you're giving the bottom half. Yeah. Of Right, somebody else, right, exactly. It's a key change that the bottom is specifically for motorcycle, not simply for people walking through the park. How about visitors who can't vote? So when we might charge for it, we have never charged for these. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, Single one person. Mm -hmm. You said it's it's the vehicle cost for five dollars. Yeah, no, they only yeah. pay three. Oh, so, they're also so a single person three. would actually pay okay. less. Okay, gotcha. Than they uh, do right now. Okay. Junior wife go now it's six and seven. Now it's six. Okay, yeah. gotcha. 
So again, we think that's a more fair structure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my concern, and we talked through this, is you know we had a lot of people backing up at the gate. Can we count? But I think you know we've looked at some options in terms of point of sale. You know, being able to send folks down the line, check them in before they get to the gate to help expedite. You know, get folks through. So I think Pat's working with his staff to be prepared for that. Is there any time frame during the day, say they get there at four in the afternoon? I mean, is it, is there what times the park? So there's some like park closes at night, park I think May the first. Yeah. Um, so it's like two around Labor Day, September first. Yeah. And then um, different, you know, as the sun gets lower, you can set that back. So you can yeah. come in four o'clock and go to May. Right. It's the same fee. Same fee, right? Just as an example, because I've done this plenty of times, especially with a kid out on the boat or something, need to run down there and pick them up. Will I have to pay to get into the park? If you're just riding through or picking up someone, picking up at the gate, you know, of course we kind of make a middle note of it. Yeah. And yeah. let staff know down there. If you're still parking, you may for longer than a few minutes. And just yeah. say somebody, somebody in the session and say, hey, we need to get somebody to park at the gate. Yeah. 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 Ye
So they could get there at 6.30 and they could park there all day? That's correct. They could be there out there all day? They could. They just have to arrive early? They could. They absolutely could. Okay. Always going to be somebody that's going to figure out how to abuse the system. It ain't going to be me coming in at 6.30, yeah. I promise you. It ain't me. Yeah. <laughs> if they're willing to get up at 6.30, it won't be me, but it could be somewhere. Yeah. 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 Right, well, I feel a little better about the difference between the two now. I so. just want to highlight that because yeah. I think that had been a question there. Yeah, the that was a concern I had. So, so I'm going to back to go back to the um, – any, any, if there's no questions on this, we can talk about it a little bit more or, or we can keep pressing through. I'm more interested to see the expenses that we have out there. The expenses? Uh, yeah, the expenses. If we're talking about Ebenezer Park, I mean, how, is this a money-making machine? Is that the way we're looking at it, is to fund both parks? Well, I think we're looking at it. I'll go back to um, to this slide. And I do actually have some slides and backup I can go through each year, the actual expenses. It's broken up into basically personnel costs, which are his staff, Pat and his staff. It's the operating costs, which is everything from, what, fuel and um, yeah, your electricity, electricity, water, and sewer, yeah, which are very high. You know, that's that's about to go up eleven percent too. Is it? I, <laughs> that, yes. That's good to know. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and his store, which is a separate account, actually. So, so primarily, you know, at the RV, you know, just what we mentioned, your expenses. I think there's we pay Comporium, we pay water and sewer, we pay electric. And then your staff, and then groundskeeping. We have a groundskeeping contract for the park. Um, those are kind of the big ticket items. Yeah, I'm yeah, and I'm, and I'm sure our staff will go up. I'm sure we'll have yeah, costs with staff. tags, yeah. mm -hmm. all of those little things. And if you're charging people a season pass, you want to make sure you got lifeguards on staff out there for the swim area, correct? So we are not hiring lifeguards. We are swimming at your own risk now. But we will have staff down there that will have eyes on the swimming area and that will run our concession stand down by the lake. Okay. And then we'll have the gatehouse staff and then some assistant ranger positions who will kind of, and part of that position was that, especially with us opening Allison Creek, and we have noticed over the last few years that, you know, staff doesn't stay around 30 years like we have. Um, so you're, that's always a turnover. So we're hoping that these assistant ranger positions will eventually want to become full-time rangers. So they're already trained, and we're just plugging them into a full-time position at some point. So we we reorganized that last year and added that position. So um, and again, you know, just to highlight, this is not including capital. We're not including that. So anything <coughs> in addition would be we could use for capital. So you're kind of hoping that some of this might pay for. Whenever I don't know, an, uh, a repair of some sort needs to be done instead of it hitting right. the capital project, it, it's part of the expense of mm -hmm. having to do that. Right, because we're looking at some um, improvements to the park. We'll call it phase two, which will include you know roads, improved paths, um, restrooms. You know, we've got a lot of complaints about the restrooms. I know mm -hmm. we talked about this, and they weren't included as part of the renovation, so that would all. So are we putting aside? It looks like we got about fifty thousand. So it's about eight percent profit. We're at eight or ten percent. Yeah, okay. and Brandon, this is to touch what Robert said. This is how I look at this park out here. It needs to cover its operating. And I wanted to have something set aside for repairs and maintenance. You have your house budget. You never put any money aside for house repairs. You're going to end up in the red in a bad way. The biggest idea is we don't want this park to be a quote unquote money maker. We'll never be transferring money to other funds or doing this and that with it. But what you see up there right now with the revenue expenses, it took a long time for Pat to get it there. And we expect Allison Creek to operate in the same manner, where we're going to be in the black year over year until we have money to put towards our capital needs. It will never completely pay for the capital investment there, but it will go towards that. I was just wanting to make sure it's not you know, money being put aside going into the general fund. So the money that's being made off of this was just going back to these parts. Now, it is Ebenezer, parks. Ebenezer and Allison Creek are in the general fund, okay? So they're departments within the general fund. Okay. All right? Just, you mentioned they are part of the general fund. And remember what we do, we've got about 100,000, I'm sorry, 100 million where the capital needs coming up. And any surplus we have in the general fund above what we need to maintain in the fund balance, we're moving towards that. 
And so these surpluses will be going towards that, towards the capital needs. Is it not possible to put these for these parks to improve just these parks and to make sure that they are sufficient? You would never cover the cost. It, it would be an I effort. Mean, obviously, we are, we are right here. I'm not talking about the, the fund. I'm not talking about the building of it, but I'm talking about the revenues for upkeep of the park. The, the expenses, the capital, we spent about $3 million, I think, Pat, on the recent renovation. Is that right? On which one? The on the recent renovations. Four, what was that? There were $4 million. $4, $4 million dollars, okay. So, and we're going to have, we're going to be switching out to asphalt roads and the concrete pads as well, coming up with new bathrooms. That little bit of staying in the black rack there is never going to come close to keeping up with the capital in there. But I'm not going to ask these parks to generate enough profit to pay for all the capital as well. Maintaining nice parks and outdoor activity, I think, is important for quality of life for our citizens and bringing out economic development. So to try to separate these parks and have them stand alone where they would support their own capital, I think you would end up having I, I, parks that just deteriorate and wouldn't be able to maintain themselves. I agree with you on the capital, and we vote for what we want to put into these parks on capital. I'm talking about upkeep. So if we are building a fund and Ebenezer Park and Allison Creek have $200,000 in there over three years, and then we can look at doing repairs such as bathroom upgrades or things of that nature as opposed to that's just voting on it and pulling those, it out. Those, of those funds, when you look at that, and I'm going to mention the bathroom upgrades, okay? That's a, what, I, what I don't want is us charging, us charging citizens within York County and then this money going to all these other parks. I want the parks to be sufficient on them, on their own. Okay, back up. I mean, the parks will never be completely sufficient on their own. They won't. Ebenezer Park is. No, it's not. To this right here. No, it's not. No, it's not. For operating, I would say. You, you've, got, you've got operating and you've got capital. Those are two distinct buckets. We expect our parks to maintain in the black on operating. This is operating they so will not happen. cover their capital. Okay, they just, they just won't. That goes again towards the quality of life for our citizens, as well as for good economic development. The, the outdoor activity that has now become so prevalent throughout the South U.S. Go look at what Greenville County does in their outdoor passive recreation. It's very important to the quality of life for our citizens. But I think it's unrealistic to expect our parks to completely support themselves. I just don't think that's going to be realistic. I think it's realistic to ask them to cover their operating expenses. And to that, put a, that's what a, I'm talking about. Okay, and a little something the towards the capital, but I, I I don't want you to believe that they will have enough to cover their capital. No, no, I'm just okay. I'm solely talking about operating expenses. Okay, and I, and I know Allison yeah. Creek may not be, generate the revenue right away, just as Ebenezer Park didn't. We're lumping these two together. I'm fine with that, but I'm not wanting to use those funds to keep up with a park that's not generating any revenue. I think we're Allison, charging for our two when Allison Creek the two most attractive. Right. When Allison Creek so comes have. on board, I expect Allison Creek P&L to match this. We've set the um, staffing up as well as the, the fees to where that park right off the bat when it opens up is, and now keep in mind, you're going to have to look at a six year snapshot. That staff won't be hired at the beginning of the year either. That park will operate just as Ebony does. There won't be a one or two year ramp up to get to that. We expect Allison Creek to operate just as this one. And that's the logic for really keeping those where they're at in the general fund. You know, Lake Wiley area has multiple parks out there that are funded separately. Those are standalone separate funds because they're responsible for their capital as well as their operating everything. These two funds over here, and then I think, what is it, Nanny's, Pat? Hey, Nanny's. We're going to take care of Nanny's. Nanny's is not set up in a position right now to generate revenue, but it really doesn't generate any expenses at this point either. Pat's going to oversee all three of these parts. He's in the same proximity, so he'll look after all of these three. And we expect those expenses to be within the general fund. The expenses for nannies are very, very minimal. I mean, really nothing at this point, other than you've got some rangers. Yeah. Would it be possible, kind of along the lines of what Brandon's talking about, though, for us to see if there's $50,000 above operating expenses at the end of the year from revenue, for us to see that as a, you know, separate put toward whatever future expenses there may be or whatever, just just so that there's, so I think what he's wanting to watch is to make sure that line doesn't keep growing to where, not that it, I don't believe it would, but I don't want, there's yeah. $250,000 yeah. in operating revenue surplus going somewhere else. Not if we're charging no. the citizens. Right. What I'm saying is as we, long as they yeah. can maintain themselves and we can see what that number yeah. is, we know. We can certainly, you know, I think the 8 to 10% range, I think, is, is the sweet spot where we're going to be at. And those are numbers that are easily pulled up in our financial software. Say, we can always go back and look at when that. When we're discussing budget and stuff, I think it'd be good for us to see 
what that surplus number is. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to get too far off track. That's yeah. essentially what I was asking, yeah. just to make sure that we are mm -hmm. making sure we're not setting the rates and just saying, oh, golly, we made $200,000, let's put it here. So, <laughs> I'd just like to take this opportunity to, to remind y'all that I want you to take this same approach to the rec fees when I'm looking out for the taxpayers in, in the Lake Wiley area, because it's pretty much the same principle. So that wraps up the day use and annual pass. Um, sorry, on the uh, onto the RV camping. Right now, we currently charge twenty-eight um, for a York County resident. We're proposing three-dollar increase for Ebenezer Park. We're proposing more for Allison Creek Park when it opens because it's going to have nicer pads, improved pads, and when. We complete the renovations as phase two at Ebenezer Park. We would then bring those in alignment with Allison Creek. But for now, that's why you see a slight difference between the two, um, is those um, sites are going to be, you know, have the improvements already in them. Um, $3 increase essentially, except you come down to the senior rates, a $4 increase there, and then non residents, $4 increase. I have a question about that, Mike. Um, is it, would it not be that a large percentage of, of the people who are in those RV spots, um, seniors? Are seniors? Yeah. I mean, I just wonder I what the ratio probably is. probably most of them are. Actually, our highest percentage of campers this year were out of county. 60-40. Uh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing how many people. We, we've got in-laws that come in and they'll camp there when they're in town. Yeah. And we don't have... Uh, the same sort of thing for non-residents, the discounts for seniors. No discount for senior non-residents. Non uh, question, you said um, that currently at Ebenezer, if they tent camp, they do it on the pad. Do they pay the full? Yes, part? Okay. they do. So how long can they book book those sites for? A week? 14. Two, up to two weeks. 14 up days. to two, 14 up to 14 days, days. okay. And typically, you're booking what, 13 months 13 out? 13 months out. Right now, we're already into July, full on the weekends. So, so mm -hmm. with Allison Creek, we can't really, with any certainty, open that up yet until mm -hmm. we get a better sense of when the construction will be complete. Gotcha. So that's why you might see initially a little bit less more. revenue from Allison Creek. Exactly. Yeah. Good deal. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Allison Creek will have primitive sites, so those costs will be less. The same kind of structures in terms of categories of um, fees. Uh, moving on to the shelters, we are going to recommend some increase to shelters. Um, what we, Pat and I discussed is the event center went in. That was part of the new construction. There's also a large shelter out there. We think that could be more in line with the with the uh, event center. You had no problems booking those out. In fact. They stayed booked all last yeah. summer, and that's a choice to, to book those. So that's what we're proposing for this year. Now, and how does that also work? Have a weekend and a weekday rate for each of those. How does that work if somebody books a shelter, you know, one hundred twenty-five dollars? How many cars do they get to bring in for that one hundred twenty-five dollars? How does that work as far yeah, as? So we we set aside a certain amount of parking spaces for um, the different shelters. Obviously, the large shelters has the most seating capacity. They're allowed, I think right now, it's um, 18, 16 to 18 spots. I had to look at my notes, but we kind of just went percentage wise. Um, and then, you know, we're very, um, we give them a call the week before and just remind them that, you know, parking is first come first serve. They only have so many spots. I mean, we've had a little bit of problems with it, but you know, you just, the only other option we would have would be not to rent shelters on the weekends. Yeah. And some of the state parks have done that, but we felt like that, uh, you know, there's just a huge draw there for those. So. Okay. Well, I thought it was pretty, um, I think it, for what we talked about with, in regards to that 5K race in September, mm -hmm. I think that's a unique opportunity to see how that goes, right? I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, it's been a while since you've done one. So. Yeah, and mm -hmm. one of the other thoughts of doing per person right now, if we started off-site parking, we would have no way to charge for people coming in the park. 
Um, you know, so because we're charging for a vehicle. So we're just thinking future out if we were to do shuttling or anything like that, this mm -hmm. covers us, you know, with people getting in the park um, for special events such as yeah. what Tom's talking about. Yeah. So Pat, are these, are these rates broken down into like, okay, an event center, well, let's just go to large shelter because event mm -hmm. center might be a little different. So large shelter um, on a, on a, July the 4th, how many times can you rent that? Is somebody going to rent that so one? It's for the entire day. For the entire day. So yes. do people usually rent for the entire day? Yes, ma'am. I mean, or several hours during the day. You know, it's, okay. it's just good for them to know they can come at any point during the day and the shelter's there. They pay for it in advance mm -hmm. and they have it. So okay. Sometimes we have to guard them with our life. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, and what's it, what is in, the, the, in parentheses where it says small shelter two to five? What's that two? To, that's that's the numbers. There's there's four small shelters and there's shelter two, three, four, and five. Like if you call and I say you. I want shelter four, it would be in that group. Okay. And what if we have like a fishing tournament or something of that nature, and you've got a pass? Are you just allowed to come in, or do we set up different fees for things like that? They would just pay whatever we agree upon. You know, council has agreed upon as far as what we proposed. Okay. Yeah. Most of your fishing tournaments, you know, they're going to be in there. Uh, and we do try to work with fishing tournaments to open the gates early because usually they want to be on the lake by daylight. So the, the tournament director will contact us. We do a venue agreement, um, which you guys have to approve. And then they work with me to have the gates open early so they're, all their contestants you know, can get in. Okay. So, and we don't charge any extra fees for, you know, them. Now, a lot of times they'll want to rent a shelter to do their award ceremony. So they would have to pay for that. Okay. Same thing with the 5K, I believe they're going to rent the event yeah. center. Yeah. So, at Eben not at Ebenezer, but at Allison Creek, what are the, um, what, what do you anticipate com people coming in for the day? If they're not RV camping, what are they, what do you think they're coming in there for? To picnic. And to fish, and, um, and you got a kayak, and we will have a kayak and canoe launch area. Okay. So, and I mean, your boaters are going to be your major draw there as well. So, a boater coming in is going to pay what? I'm just, they're going to just. If they're a county it. resident, it'd be three dollars. Three dollars. Okay. Same if they're as, an adult, yeah. Same as the day, same as Ebenezer. Okay. What's going to happen is most of the people are just going to buy a pass, mm -hmm. so they don't I have to we'll deal with that. I think we'll see seasonal will go up this year. The price of the pass is only a ten dollar increase from before. It's year round and both parks. So, so and we, we're charging by the head. It don't matter if they're in the boat or in the car. That's exactly right. right. So if you got an annual pass, you get the whole family in. Can I go ahead and get mine tonight? <laughs> He's got. Yeah, some I think it's well. <laughs> Do you have some? That is you? very important to this conversation tonight because I need to order them, <laughs> yeah. and I'm needing you, you so guys. Every time to, I see Patrick, like, where are we on? We'll go ahead and yeah. get ours I mean, We are like really close to uh, ground zero here, so we need to. So, so I just want to ask a couple more just example questions. So, if somebody is there and they're camping and they've got people that are coming to to just hang out with them for a few hours, those people are going to pay what? If you're coming to the campsite, there is no fee. If you're coming to visit a camper, as long as they do not take up, as long as they can space, park in that campsite. That's area. correct. So, okay, so if you got four or five people coming, then they're going to need to have a they're going to need to pay to get in or. Have a pass. Again, if there's room at the campsite, you know, and y'all can fit them in there without, you know, having to use parking, then you know we won't charge those guests. Okay. All right. Good Anything deal. else? And then uh, you can see the new Allison Creek shelters charges there. And then we already talked through this. And again, as I mentioned at um, the retreat, the new category is parking lot boot. And that's something we've grappled with. If somebody is illegally parked there, do you, do you tow them? I mean, that could be a challenge if you come back from swimming and your car's gone. Here, at least, you could call somebody and they could come out and unlock you and it, it would serve as a deterrent. Hopefully we never have to use it, but <laughs> I just worry you want to have a tool in your toolbox if yeah. you need it. Yeah. You haven't been out to Ebenezer Park. <laughs> I, I worry a little bit about putting staff in the place to deal with that person who's been out on the boat all day and had a few to drink and they come back and they've got to deal with them with a boot on their car. My only concern with it being booted. So yeah. Yeah, we, we've had that conversation. The good news is we've got deputies there, you know, yeah. for mm -hmm. the majority of the day on the weekends. So I think that's gonna help situation but they're just a call away if you need them yeah 
I mean, we just hate the fact that you know you come off the lake, you got to charge, you got to pay two hundred to get, yeah. you get your car out yeah. of tow, where it's twenty five dollars for a boot. I mean, you know. It's, and if it's we, on we weekend, had one vehicle I, towed last year. I know on weekend sometimes if you get a car towed, you can't get it till Monday. That's so you're exactly really, right. You know, and then you pay the two days yeah. of impound fee and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's my only concern. I like the idea. I just worry about putting staff in a sure. bad spot. So. Just hoping yeah. the word to get out. Again, we want the deterrent effect. Yeah. Hmm. You have a strong deterrent. Hopefully, you're. I think it'll be it. important to review these numbers in a year after after we've had a full year of Allison Creek and everything. I think it'll be important to just look at these numbers again, kind of evaluate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What, yeah. what the uses retreat. are, and we can look at the retreat. And we can, we'll have more data mm -hmm. maybe next year yeah. or something like that. Is the sheriff's department charging us for their deputies out there? They are not. We uh, have worked that out, and so is that something we foresee having to pay for in the future? At least not with current. And he is looking at um, a contract you know, to, to have folks okay. come out there. But he's already had folks out for, for Pat on the weekends because it's already full. Well, not full, but you've already got a lot of folks showing up on the yeah. weekends. Some of the weekends have been busy already. I mean, the campground's been full, but day use has just been based on weather. You know, this weekend it'll be full. Mm -hmm. And then last, um, for field day, propose a couple of changes, three changes total. Uh, fairly modest, but in talking with, with um, Jason, you know, he's recommending these for the Gold Banner sponsorship and then uh, just some reservation fees for residents and non-residents would go up. But the full day would not change. It would only be the, because as you asked earlier, um, Allison, the, we only charge by hours at field day, whereas he's a whole, full day when you rent the shelter. Just a quick question on that curiosity more than anything else, but the gold banner sponsorship gets a year, but the silver only gets six months for half the price. What's the the thinking behind that? So, I, seem you like know, it'd it's be gold a, versus silver. I mean, maybe that's part of it. And then um, I can see it being six hundred. But I was just thinking, I would would it, assume that's a smaller it, banner it may or something. Maybe that they just want to try it out and see how it works. You know, because this you know, you're committing to half of it. So. Usually, yeah. usually when I do things like with the, the high schools and stuff, you know, the gold is the big banner and the silver is the small banner. But if these right. are same size, you just get half the amount of the time. Right. Okay. That makes sense. We originally um, set these fees, talked about these fees. We talked about giving a, um, a little bit of a benefit to those people who are willing to commit for a year. Right. And that's why they're 600 and, and 1,000. Um, so I think we maybe ought to still consider that because it ends up being the same thing. We'd like to be Maybe they yeah. save $100. If they, so $1,100? Yeah, maybe, or, or maybe 500 for the silver sponsor. And I don't know, I'd, I'd want to look at how many silver sponsors there are versus how many gold sponsors there are. And so I know we've got some good gold sponsors, but I think maybe um, another thing there is sometimes people want to put something up. Maybe they've got an event or something. Um, so um, maybe we would add a, um, an event banner. Like maybe they've got something coming up in a month or two months, and um, they want to put a banner up that's just going to be up for a 30-day period or, you know, two months. I, I don't know, but it's, it's one of the things we originally talked about, and I still think it's probably a good idea. So you're saying like an event? Uh, like a 30-day banner. Like a 30-day th like banner that might cost them. Yeah. You know, maybe they maybe it's $100 to put up a, a – or maybe it's I don't know, not that much, but – I don't know. I, I think it'd be worth it. As a business, I mean, I think it'd be worth it for a 30-day banner at 100 bucks. So when we originally talked about it, it was only for events. It was not for a business. That was uh, our original thing. So so it keeps the businesses from coming out there and putting something up for the month of December if they're retail sales or something. Um, so an event being like something at the park, you mean? Like a, um, something like um, the Coraliers. Let's say the Coraliers have got their, their and we want to, you know, they want to promote their schedule, um, something like that. Um, Something that's community oriented, but a community oriented event. So is that something? How often does the is that something that staff would decide as community oriented, or is that something that your board would decide? I think know, Jason. How often would it be reviewed? That kind of stuff. Yeah, I think Jason could make that determination. So no campaign banners. I wouldn't. I'm just I wouldn't. <laughs> no. Not even mine. How about that? No, I do. I do think the one year needs to be a little okay. bit of a break to encourage I, I people. Think I'll have that conversation. My my sense is maybe we just make that eleven hundred. 
for the year instead of twelve hundred, and then you get a hundred dollar break. Mm -hmm. And I'll see if Jace has the issues with that, and if if not, we'll go with that. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Um, I think that a person who's looking at a silver banner and only wants to do six months might be on a budget. So reducing that one to five hundred might get more people in than reducing the one that people are, are not concerned with paying twelve hundred dollars for. So I would I would say I would make the I would keep the twelve hundred and I would reduce the silver banner to five hundred. But I would just buy two banners at five hundred a piece and get one yeah. year. Yeah. What? I would just buy two silver banners at five hundred right. bucks a piece and get one full year instead of paying twelve hundred. If that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. You want to encourage nobody the longer buy, banners. Nobody would ever buy gold. At yeah, they would. yeah, I would just buy silver because it costs me more to buy gold. I like the idea of what you said first of the the gold being slightly less than mm -hmm. two silvers. So. Yeah, 1100 yeah. for the gold. Yeah. 1100 yeah. Okay. I just don't want to, I don't want to. Okay. Well, if you wanted I to lower it, it go down to, to 500 It gives and, you a $100 discount for signing up for a year. Yeah. Yeah. So is there, with this, night access is there going to be a combo that you can buy day access night access at a package they are separate um, i'll let you speak to that yes yeah, so i will say majority of our people who have not access cards buy mm -hmm. the season pass they just do it together but we do not give a discount on that and we've never had any problem uh, because fun, fun number one those boaters who are serious they feel very secure that their stuff is secure yeah. inside the park yeah. and they don't mind paying that extra yeah okay for a boat. that works Okay, so on this, I'll make we'll make those changes 1100, and we'll um, look at a 30-day uh, event for 100, dollars and we'll make those changes. Yeah. Mike, will you let us know? I'm just curious to know um, because we've been there how too. How many sponsors there are? Yeah, how many there are that are silver? How many are gold? Um, are those sh the shelter naming rights at 6,000 was not a problem? Um, the field naming rights. Who's done field naming rights and who's done scores tower um, rights in the community center? I think some of those are still hanging out there un, unsold and um yeah i'll see how many of those we've sold yeah i'd rather uh, sell them than have the price so high that i mean i'd rather i'd rather so why don't we do that? you know get fifteen thousand dollars and wait for twenty five thousand dollars on some of those so maybe That's we reduce the number of years that they're good for so okay we'll just reevaluate has, that we need that has there been any thought around doing allowing banners in ebenezer and for the i don't know that we've considered i mean from that. an advertising perspective with our lease agreement with Duke Energy, they're not allowed. They're not allowed. Okay. okay. Gotcha. That answers that question. Yeah. Probably the same question. thing in Allison Creek. Right. Yeah. The and leases are the Tom, same. one of the things that we did at Field Day Park, where you see that under the notes, one year and the park buys the banners, mm -hmm. um, that should still that should be actually under silver banner because we've tried to make those very consistent, make them all the same size and look alike. And um, I think that's that because there are a lot of them there, but it makes it it just makes it look better and more attractive. So and that's important, I think. All right. All right. So that um, concludes my presentation. So with that, the next step is um, we we had the first reading by title only last council meeting. We uh, had talked with the chair and vice chair at the last agenda meeting about keeping this going because to Pat's point, he'd like to move forward with passes. So we would like to bring this back at the next council meeting with the changes we we discussed here. If there's no objections to that, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good. good. I think I was the most vocal last time. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. just wanted to be sure. Yeah. So that that'll be our plan going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. right. So last is Kevin. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quick. Y'all call me if you got any questions about things. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the sheriff's budget. Um, Trish and myself had lunch with the sheriff and Stephen Patnos. Stephen Patnos is finance guy. He had a lot of concerns about his budget for the upcoming year. You know, during the year, the sheriff has significantly increased the pay for the prison detention center. Um, he's at about forty thousand dollars now. He was at fifty-one vacancies. He had the job for out there. He's filled twenty-seven of those now. So his vacancies are rapidly diminishing. Um, he's got real concerns about what's going to happen in next year's budget to him going in the red. Um, I told him, and Mr. Winkler would appreciate this, that I'm not about to go ask for any type of millage increase or recommend one when we're generating surpluses. He's still scheduled to generate a surplus right now this year. We're thinking about $2.5 on his portion of the general fund. Um, 
my gut tells me he's probably going to dip into his reserves next year with the salary increases he had and the fact that he's filling these positions. Um, but, you know, we are not to the point where we want to come in here and ask for him to have a millage increase. Sheriff sent me a nice little email about that. I'll pass it out to you all a little bit here maybe. Um, just expressing some of his concerns about his budget next year, how tight it's going to be. Um, and, you know, I told him, I said, well, it's kind of interesting because there's we getting – we have a purpose for our surpluses, and we always put it aside what with the expenses we have coming up. We plan to continue to do that to make sure we're in a position where we foresee our capital needs and don't ever have to borrow. Um, we can adjust millage as necessary to make sure we can pay for whatever we need to pay for in cash rather than go through financing costs. But um, he's getting to that point. You know, um, what you might see not in this in 23's budget, but in 24's budget, he talked about moving some of the two mills he has right now set of ties toward his capital needs. The detention center um, capacity is right now on a very reasonable number. Um, we'll be adjusting in the future, but I wanted to pass his message along to you all about his concerns with his budget right now. He's always going to be able to have what he needs to do his job, and his budget has that. He did take his the offset to his expenses and the revenue side of the column to keep in balance. The appropriation, fund balance appropriation to vacancies, it's gone from $1.3 million to $5 million. Um, he ha has a plan and he is filling his vacancies right now. So just want to make sure you all abreast of that and know, you know, as these budgets are tightening up, this is what we've been working towards. Um, you know, 2024 is the year where I think we will even contemplate or talk about a possible adjustment in the general fund, but not for 2023. So, but I want to pass that along from the sheriff to you all where he's at right now. Um, getting into the rest of the general fund, we've talked for a while now about raise pool. We have in our budget at this point a 5% merit-based raise pool for the employees. And we've also got a class and comp study to be done during fiscal year 23 as well. I expect our vacancies, and we've started to fill positions right now, our HR department, 1,200 employees, we're going from four, we've got six, and in next year's budget we're in a seventh. The additional personnel was for the recruitment and retention of our employees as well as additional training that we're not doing right now. Trying to, we're asking, We've always had a very small HR department compared to the size of our county. We're asking more of HR department in areas they've never done before. We were fortunate enough to hire a young lady from Asheville that's coming in to head up the recruitment side of HR, and she's going to also be heavily involved in actually the training um, that we give our supervisors. I think we're at the point in the county now we need to be doing better training for supervisors that step in that role that have never supervised before. I had a discussion with her today about that specifically. So our vacancies will start shrinking. We've, for years, we've talked about this recession coming. And during a recession, that's when people go to work at the government. And that's what I expect we're going to see happening over the next 18 months. Um, millages. I'll let you know right now, our general fund's not in balance. The general fund, others not. The sheriff has his and solicitor does. Ours is not. We're hoping to get some good news from the state regarding retirement. I'm not, I'm sorry, retirement health insurance. Uh, I've talked with darn everybody I know. I talked today with Senator Johnson a little bit about this. The Senate budget, nor the House budget at this point, has anything in there for the employer portion of health care. I think I've told all y'all this right now. It's scheduled to go up 18.1%. That's a hard pill to swallow. Um, I'm going to probably end up sending an email to my senator asking for some compassion in that and maybe phasing this stuff out over a number of years. The House version of the um, their budget has the tax cuts I think over five or six years, the Senate's version is a little more aggressive. Um, we're going to ask for some compassion with health insurance increases. But as it stands right now, and I don't expect a general fund millage increase of any kind, we are going to see the um, rule fire go up two tenths of a mil. We have a 10 year plan on rule fire. That millage increase is planned, and we will continue to see those millage increases increase as we add greater fire protection in the corporate area. The um, convenience center, that millage will go up two-tenths of a mil as well. This is something we planned and talked about. Even with that two-tenths of a millage, we expect them to lose $100,000. Um, their fund balance is in the position where they could absorb that. We could have gone up four-tenths. We did not do the two-tenths. You'll figure that out real quick in a second. The debt service millage, because we're not adding new debt as we're paying stuff off, that is going to drop four-tenths of a mil. So if you're doing your math, we have no tax increase for anybody in the county. And if you live in municipalities, you're actually going to see a small decrease in your taxes from us. Um, the value of a mill, you know, we continue to be very um, prosperous in York County and very fortunate for where we're at. 
the un the unincorporated Viva Mills projected to be 990. The Viva Mill countywide, one million six hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's about three and a half percent. You know, we've got three and a half percent is great growth in the Viva Mill, but when you look at you know the cost of everything, the expenses going on, you know that's not keeping up with it. With the raises, the cost of our employees as well as the cost of other items, um, again, somewhere in the future, growth will not be able to pay for the growth. That's just reality. I don't want to be yes show about that and say, oh, we'll never have to raise taxes, this or that. It's going to be when we have, um, when we've really tapped out and it's going to be staff's responsibility to prove to you all why that millage increase is necessary. But I want you to know at some point in the future that will be necessary. It's not this year, I can promise you that. I hope for it not to be the year after that. But as much as our value mill grows, we're not going to keep up with inflation. That's just the bottom line. The benefit to us is we'll have seven or so, what's the millage, Aaron? Seven, eight mills in debt service? We're going to see that go away completely in 2024. So even if we do have to raise taxes, you're still going to see a tax decrease from the county to our taxpayers when that happens. And we're able to do that because, again, we try to operate always thinking ahead and putting ourselves in a position where we're not going to ever get behind the ball having to go out and borrow money. We're going to we monitor, our, you saw the retreat, we monitor our capital expenses and make sure we've got the funding in place that's necessary. Our capital expenses such as um, Riverbend, if that can be spread out to make it affordable for us, we will do that. We're not going to rush anything to where you have to go out and borrow. Um, CVB, 300000 of ATAX. Okay? So we can all not worry about that anymore. We're doing what we said we'd do with that. Um, water and sewer rate increases. Um, I've looked a lot at this. This has gotten a lot of attention lately. I'll put out some numbers here. In the um, York County, over the last 20 years, York County has raised water rates 42%, sewer rates 52% in the last 20 years. In the last eight years, 80 and 78% has been the increase in our cost of water. Um, we are not going to always be able to continue to absorb that. You know, we're past this year, we're doing a 5 and 2% increase, not the 11 and 3%. We're absorbing it in the rest of ours. And you got to keep in mind when we don't make the water, okay? So we got to buy the water. We have a cost of the water. Then we have the same cost Rockhill does for our personnel as well as our equipment. All the capital, the water towers and lines, everything else we have to run. And keep in mind, we are a growing county. We haven't put all that stuff down. Um, at some point, you know, we're going to have to start passing more of those along to our customers. But as of right now, we're just, again, passing along the five and the two. And we're going to continue to monitor that. And we, we're not just looking at this year. We're looking at, you know, the near future as well. And keep in mind, we have those two studies out there. At some point in time, we, would, we, we do want to be, we need to be in the business the water business and the wastewater business. And I'll tell you all now, and we've all talked about this before, that's not going to be something that we have to support our general fund either. That's going to be a standalone need to provide affordable water and wastewater for York County and other, other counties as well. We're looking at a regional approach. We're going to talk to Lancaster and Chester County about this. Affordable water and wastewater, affordable utilities are key for economic development. And, you know, again, we've all, we beat this to death at the retreat. I don't get too much into it. But um, we are still actively pursuing that. So with all that said, those are all the updates I got as of right now for you all with where we're at in the budget. Um, when we talk again next, I'll have more details. But any questions about where we're at? So, go ahead. I have a question. I hear rumors that there's some adjustments being made with the um, Biden bucks and the ARPA money and <laughs> where we're spending and what we're spending and what we're doing. It's, it's um, you know, Trish is, that's the main hat Trish yeah. wears. Um, and she's also, I'll tell you, she's been very involved in the budget this year, reviewing everybody's budgets. Um, the Biden bucks, we actually thought about talking about that some tonight. Um, but since you asked, I'll go into a little details. Trish, you speak up if I misspeak, please. You know, we're, we're a county, the size of our county. Um, we are, are basically have the most stringent requirements of what we're doing. Um, you know, water and sewer, we originally had planned to do about 25, we had a $25 million project. That project came in at about 14. I had some contingency on top of that. Um, a lot of the things we're trying to do are, you know, they're, they're difficult. Like right now we're going through and we're vetting the radios very, very thoroughly. Because the radio expenses we're buying with the buying bucks are going to be over a million dollars, 
there's a lot of requirements we have to meet. We're working with our external auditors. We're working with John Carter and Alan Brand over there to make sure we're doing what we need to do. We, number one, first and foremost, we want to make sure we spend the money wisely and on things we can do. We're avoiding areas where we can possibly end up having to write a check back. We don't want to do that for sure. And we're also making sure we do everything we can. We're doing position. We're giving out bonuses with these monies. We're not going down that path again. We're going to pay people the traditional way. Um, there are some challenges right now with making sure we have enough eligible expenses to go on through that. The water and sewer is the safest area, but one of our primary focuses, and I'll talk about radials, for instance. The radials are funded really through countywide taxes. If it's funded through countywide taxes, that's what we want to prioritize, and that's what we focus on first and foremost. Water and sewer is almost like a last resort in there on that. But as of right now, we've not had any dramatic changes that we plan to do, but um, there are some challenges. We, Talk with Mr. Hudspeth about that, and we're talking with our external auditors. We're talking with NACO. We're talking with Southern Coast counties. It is a constant monitoring battle. Um, we had stuff just was it today? We got back from 911. We're going we're to be sending to Elliot Davis to make sure they're going to be fine with that. Our top priority again is to make sure we don't do any of these the funds that are going to get ourselves in trouble. And you know, then we make sure we're spending it in the wisest fashion possible, where it benefits the most taxpayers. Well, on my way out the door, I will remind you that there is a placeholder for about $5 million that could be used for broadband to help the western side of the county. And that was something that all of us said we wanted held there. So if that is something, I think you know, if we're under on some expenditures, there's $5 million out there that we could do something with. Well, what we, and this is where broadband's at right now, too, is largely driven the information out from the state. The state apparently has a surplus of broadband money. And the guidance we've got for them is don't spend your money there, we got more than enough on the broadband. Broadband is very, very well funded right now. Um, that is an area that, you know, Robert, we haven't forgotten about that, and we won't. But as of right now, and unless we hear otherwise from the state, I think the state has more than ample funding from that. You know, I think you, you can talk to the social counties, find out about that as well. But that's something that we talk about on a regular basis as well. Not, nobody's told us that has changed, so that's the assumption we're working under. But no, we haven't, haven't forgotten about that. Tom? Yes. Yeah, so, um, First of all, Kevin, thank you for that information. Um, Council of Aging um, in RFATS. Um, in the last five months, I've been working with David Hooper, and David and I have talked a little bit about this. Um, what we've been working on is to get access transportation to the disabled and elder, elderly people from within uh, Tiga K, Fort Mill, and, and Lake Wiley. Uh, Alice and I have talked mm -hmm. about this also. Um, the, the process is moving forward at this point. Everything is it's, it's looking very positive. Um, in fact, um, right now, David Hooper is, is going now to get the um, matching funds, uh, which he expects to fund 75% of the on-demand cost for the people in Tiga K Fort Mill in, in Lake Wiley. Um, and again, this on-demand service is available in other parts of York County. But when you call on-demand service in access in, in my district, in Allison's district, and um, you know uh, Joel's district, et cetera, in parts of Fort Mill, they can't get it because it's being blocked by a federal overlay coming out of Charlotte as part of their transportation program. So hmm. what we're doing is we're, we're, we're bringing in access into the area and allowing the elderly and disabled to call and they can be brought to doctor's appointments um, they can be brought to the pharmacy, uh, you know, places where they need to be served. Um, so I'm, I'm letting you all know this, and David, you and I talked probably two months ago about this. They're coming back with the final numbers on this, and we're going to, as a whole, we would represent roughly 25% of the overall cost. He's estimating he's going to be able to cover 75% of this. That cost would then be split up amongst the, the two municipalities in your county and the unincorporated area. Probably the estimated cost for us per year is probably gonna be about 50,000 for the on-demand cost, but I wanna share this with you, and that 50,000 should cover both Allison and I's unincorporated area, but I wanna share this with you because we are looking, we are moving forward, and I know David, you and I talk, so I, again, I wanna make sure everybody's up to speed. Okay, this. that's good information, the 50,000 is a good number. And it reminded me of something I meant to remind you all about. As of right now, Karen, you're creeping some more. I think Mr. Winkler is the only one that has spent um, the funds set aside for council members 
for projects in the district? No, I, you, you, I've already submitted mine. Yeah. Okay, I stand corrected. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Yeah. But um, this is something I, I start rattling the department heads at this time of year as well, particularly on capital things that they've not been able to get to during the year. Please don't forget about that. That's mm -hmm. not, it doesn't roll over. Make you sure if you've submitted those, there's a there's a form that goes with that, and it comes before finance and operations for us to approve it. So, well, you're speaking sure. of C funds. No, no, no. Well, we're not. okay, then. This is then our discretionary then, funds. Discretionary funds. Yeah. No, I have not. Okay, I all right. Okay. Not. No. You know what? What we might do, and these go through finance and operations. I mean, Robert, if you'd be fine with this, if y'all wouldn't mind getting Karen to give each of y'all a accounting of what you've got still remaining, mm -hmm. and we can disperse it through finance and operations, and y'all can get the forms to fill out and complete, and then send them back to finance and operations. And I know what yeah. I spent, so I'm I'm good with mine. I'm, yeah. I'm I've got a few others. I've just got one municipality that has asked for more than I was planning on spending in one municipality, but I got a couple others that aren't asking for anything. So yeah. they might want to get one to ask. Yeah, for. You know, we're we're in April right now, yeah. so the the year is winding down, and these are not things you know. I, I yeah. always hate it when the last minute trying to get those out. So um, I work with Karen and Robert through F and O to get those the numbers and forms out to y'all. Think of those completed. That'd I think great. people have you know, and I'll throw it out there. You know, pathway I think is to talk to some of y'all about that. That's perfectly fine as well. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'll throw out there now, um, you can't spend your twenty thousand dollars on a recurring expense. That's only one, one. Well, one of the key limitations on that. So I'll, I'll keep you posted though on this access rate. It is going. It's going to go through. Um, but I, we're in. It's exciting news because we can finally serve the elderly and disabled in our area. You know, because we have some that can't even go to dialysis because they're disabled and they Uber won't pick them up and bring them there. It's a shame this has been going on for years. And I know, you know, you, you run into the same issue in Lake Wiley. So it's exciting that we're able to move forward with this. Um, but again, I just want to make sure you're up to speed. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Anything else? I just want to say thanks, Mike, for all the numbers and the Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel a lot better about it. So thank you. Yeah. All right, then uh, sure we don't want to go a little longer because Tom's got an anniversary to go celebrate. So we can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got to keep this marriage alive after 25 years. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then I guess I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. All right. All right. We're out of here.